Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of the UK Connection and actually the two guys that make the UK part of this show happen, Mr. Simon Bray, Mr. Stephen Reed. Greetings, gentlemen. Simon, I hope you're feeling better today. So much better. Good. That's good to hear. We don't like Uncle Simon when he's not feeling good. Although yeah. Uncle Simon, when he's not feeling good, is very entertaining. But still, <laughs> I, I want Simon to feel better. So He likes Uncle Simon all the time. Yes. Well, I, we, <laughs> we love Uncle Simon all the time. Well, yes, yes, we don't like him. We love him. Yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you looked so much better, Simon, by the end of the show two weeks ago. You actually looked drenched in sweat. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you looked ill. You really would tell. I, I I take I take my mythical whatever it is hat off to you. Yeah, the funny thing is, here. most people though, when they're feeling as bad as Simon was feeling, probably would sit on this Zoom call and they would not say anything. They'd be sliding off the chair. Simon just one zinger after another. He's like, he, you know, you could just tell his wheels around. So I feel like shit, but damn, I'm going to give 150 percent to this episode, regardless, right? So, yep, just what you get. But tonight, I'm only going to give 32. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's more than most that, people's right? hundreds. So that's fine. You'll still outshine the two of us. Perfect. <laughs> He's done perfect. 31% equals 100% of us. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> okay, so, somebody, somebody's already timing this. Come on. I know. Somebody... Come on. Come on. we got to beat 10 minutes. 29? Was it 10, 29 last time? Something yeah. like that. Too the much time spent before. on the suds, right? Too much time. Anyway, before we start talking about Ozzy Osbourne and our favorite, least favorite wild card albums from the Ozzy catalog, uh, it's beer time because I don't know about you guys, but uh, it's five o'clock somewhere. Not here yet. By you guys it is. So, uh, Simon, what are you drinking today? Glad, glad you asked because I'm about to win. Okay, so I don't often do, but um, just because I could the other day, I got Mrs. Simon to... Uh, order for me because I can't be trusted with our uh, money um, to order me the new um, Iron Maiden Imperial Stout comes in a box Ooh. 10% oh yeah it's 6.6 .6 UK units in just in this bottle so yeah I will be completely assholed by the end of this <laughs> yeah however I'm not going to drink it all doing this but look at that it's not so sexy look how sexy wow, that is. Yeah. I've, seen, I've seen photos of it first time I've actually seen it Yes, nice. Oh, yeah, nice. so black. I'm, I'm going to sip and enjoy, because if I don't sip and enjoy, I'll glug it and lapse into a coma fairly shortly. <laughs> so. Which is actually what, roughly what I did after the end of last week's show. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that sounds good. Uh, can we can we see a little bit of that uh, dark uh, black goodness there? Well, you could, but I put it in, you know, a, oh, a, you got in the goblet. A goblet, doesn't it? Because it's a beer of truth. So, but I'll I'll sip it for you and tell you if it's good. Okay. Holy shit! That's our gas bike. Yes, I've named that. So nice. Mm. No. Need to get myself some of that. Mm. Cool. You'll need to take out a second mortgage, but nonetheless, uh... how, how much? If you don't mind me asking, how much was it? I think it was about fifteen of your earth earth pounds plus seven pound seven pound uh, carriage. For, for for how many? One. How many? One. No, 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 no. You're not understanding my question. How many? <laughs> Just the one. So you've ah. got in your in in your possession this evening on screen. You've got twenty two pounds worth. Uh, it dep depends if you if you include the uh, postage as part of the yeah yeah basically yeah 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 but I don't give a shit so so that would be basically like me going to New York City to Madison Square Garden to see Iron Maiden in concert and ordering a shitty Budweiser for nineteen ninety nine or twenty dollars or whatever they charge for a, a crappy beer at a concert or sporting event here in New York these days. Yeah, but without actually seeing I seeing Iron Maiden, um, I I was kind of expecting them to turn up and deliver it myself. You know, the, to they me, should have for that price. <laughs> come on, stick, come on, Nick, oh, come on, in you come, in you come, in, come on. I can just imagine Yannick would be standing outside with his mailman's bag on, swinging it round his shoulder, <laughs> <laughs> kicking it with his feet. You know, <laughs> kind of hoping Bruce to just land on the road across, you know, or somewhere else. But no, no. He just, uh, just all the him. hate's now going to come. But why are you guys always picking on Yannick? God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> 
friend, friend of mine ended it's up easy. in the pub with Yannick Gers once. He's the nicest man in the world, I believe. I'm sure he is. I I think he's, fine he's, you know, he's, yeah. he's easy to make fun of, unfortunately. That's the thing, you know, dancing around and doing what he does. Anyway, sorry, Stephen. Would I swap my life for his? Yeah. <laughs> 100%. There you go. Yes, absolutely. He wins every single time. Every time. We can make yeah. fun of him all we want. He's up there laughing he's at the us. the winner. Yep. Every single time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I have gone, I don't know if I've done this in the show before or not, but I've gone for an innocent gun. I have, had that. I have had that before, Mr. Reed. Have you? There yes. you go. Yes, innocent gun's a thing over there, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So this is a Caribbean rum cask Scottish red beer, and it is 6.7. I've had it before, definitely. I don't know if I've shown it on the show before, but I've had it before. It looks like this in the glass. It's the real deal in the glass, and I know it's good because I've had it before. Yeah, they do the rum cask and the bourbon cask uh, beers. I've I've had a few of them. Yeah, good. Lovely. That's fabulous. I haven't had them in a number of years, but I've had a whole bunch of theirs. They they, they sell them here. They're, they're pretty good. I like them. Yeah, they're usually good. All right. Me, I'm going uh, California beer this time. I'm drinking a Sierra Nevada Hazy Little Thing IPA. You Hazy so, Little Thing? Hazy little thing. This is uh, the uh, Sierra Nevada Brewing Company, Chico, California. It is 6.7%, a little on the high side for me, but didn't have a lot to choose from in the house. So I stole one of my wife, be wife's beers. And uh, interestingly enough, this is a West Coast brewery doing like a New England style, East Coast style hazy IPA. There it is right there in my Burlington Beer Company glass out of Vermont. And uh, very citrusy, piney. Typical Sierra Nevada, Nevada fashion. Very good. And and the one difference between the way they do these type of beers out in the West Coast and specifically in Sierra Nevada, it's it's not full on grapefruit, tangerine flavor. You get it, but you still get that pininess because they're really big on that kind of using specific hops to get that kind of pine flavor. So very good. Tasty. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Who, who's on the bingo? How, how many minutes was that? Not enough. Not enough. We need, we need to get going. Shit. Oh, do we, should we talk about some music instead? Yeah, we could do that, right? <laughs> so, we are favorite, least favorite Ozzy Osbourne solo catalog today. And uh, he's got, how many albums has he got in total? A dozen? Something like that? I forget. I didn't count exactly. I've got them all sitting here, but I've got compilations of lives and what well, who knows. I'll do that. Some to talk, I'll count. Yeah, so he's got uh, many solo albums. He's got uh, a couple of live albums. There are uh, there's a covers album. There's you know all sorts of things. Early on in his career, of course, he had specific bands. Now there's almost thirteen. Got gotcha. you, In including the covers. I was close. Okay, um, you were right, actually. It was a guess. It was just a guess. You're still right. <laughs> Sorry. I did all that for no reason at all. There isn't much of an Ozzy Osbourne band anymore these days. Uh, for his last couple albums, he's basically, when he does studio records, it's just like bringing whoever, you know, if you look at a couple of albums, there's like, you know, 50 people that show up on these specific albums. But, uh, you know, the Oz man still cometh, as always. And uh, no matter what's going on in Ozzy's life, health-wise or anything, he always finds a way to make another album. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if next year we see another one from him. So so anyway, so we picked out our two favorites, our two least favorites, and a wild card. Of course, the wild card can be basically anything we want it to be. Uh, a live album, a compilation, an album that kind of isn't one of the best, but it certainly isn't one of the worst, but it's solid, sits somewhere in the middle. We All sorts of things we can choose for the wild card. So uh, we'll start off with our two favorites. And I'll turn it over to Simon. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This, um, at the risk of being boring and really repetitive, is favourites, not best. That's right. And so, you know, um, so, sometimes you read the comments and you think, I can you read, I can't believe you didn't choose album X. What's wrong with you? <sighs> well, see, this is, fa this is favourites. This is like, I, I always try and think this is, you know, when did this album come into my life? Why did I, why did I like it? What's so special? What's so special about it? It doesn't necessarily have to be the best. 
right. the one that just makes you feel all warm and cuddly inside. And for and me, there's no way uh, to to quantify best, right? Because we all could think of something as a best, right? It's yeah. just like I again, and you're you're absolutely right. Sometimes when when people say those things, I'm like, well, you know. You have your favorite brand of peanut butter. I have mine. You have your favorite kind of pizza. I have mine. You have your favorite color sweater. I have mine, right? We all have our favorites. They don't all have to be the same. So there's no, like, I can't believe you picked that. It's like, well, my yeah. choice doesn't have to be yours, right? That's the way it goes. So as yeah. you can see, we, the three of us never agree on stuff here hardly when we're doing these shows. So same goes for everybody watching. So anyway, sorry, son. Yes. So um, I, I thought longer and harder about this than I really thought I was going to. Because I don't, I don't know if I've ever been on record as saying as something along the lines of, I don't like Black Sabbath, and one of the main reasons is the singer. I think I might have said that somewhere. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. I think I feel, I feel like I did. However, I really, really like lots of Aussie solo material. I really, really like lots of it. It's a big period where I don't. There's, there's lots of it. Really, really, and I utterly, utterly adore. Bark at the moon. Thank you, Stephen. Good barking. Yes, indeed. Howling very much like a um, howly thing that's very, very howly. I, uh, it's one of those albums that I know every word to. I know when every little fill's coming in, and every little, every little twiddly bit of guitar is coming. Come, I just absolutely love it. Um, I, I have no idea why. Why? I, and how I got this, whether or not I got this before I got the early ones or um, afterwards, I genuinely don't know. I don't recall ever seeing the video on MTV initially. I'm cool, I've got to buy that. I remember retrospectively watching the video and thinking, <laughs> oh, he's the Prince of Darkness, really? Excellent. He looks he looks like next door's dog. But anyway, um, yeah. Um, I, Absolutely adore the, uh, the title track, Bark at the Moon. Yeah, just, whoa. And I, I, I'm not usually a, a huge fan of Twiddly Twiddly Guitars. I'm sure you've mentioned that, but I love Jay Keighley on this. In fact, I love Jay Keighley. Oh, well, both. Is it both the Jay Keighley albums that he did with Ozzy? Love, love them both. Um, one of the reasons that this is my favourite, and this might seem really, really weird, is that my mother, God rest her, was a, was a huge fan of so tired yes terrible well some people think but i really like it um you know uh, she really she really liked it she really liked it and she liked it when i played when i played stuff that wasn't really loud and really annoying uh and um uh, what, what a cool 12 inch this is by the way it's got a cool version of uh, walk at the moon life suicide solution and paranoid but yeah uh, yes uh, yeah um <clears throat> really really um good bordering almost on 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 a pop record in many ways yeah but with uh with su super speedy guitars um like i said i know every single word of it and uh, i've enjoyed it and listened to it regularly which is something i'll probably say not say about something else i'll pull out later listen to it regularly um ever ever since ever since i got it 40 must be nearly 40 years ago wasn't it oh god i'm so getting old there. It's getting there yeah but yeah, um, and, they, and that was the album too. That uh, at least here in the states, where he became like kind of like a uh, hockey arena, borderline stadium act, right? Because he, you know, he's that started a little bit with the first two albums. But the Bark at the Moon tours were the first time I saw him in a big, you know, like twenty thousand seater arena uh, with Motley Crue opening up. So that was that was kind of like that, and that started everything. And he never looked back after that. And yet, over over here, never really. Stadium selling was a stadium number, right? No, I I saw Aussie not at festivals. I saw him a few times at festivals, but I only twice not at festivals. Once in the Barrowlands in Glasgow, which is not a big place, probably mm. under or just over a couple of thousand. Then once in the Edinburgh Playhouse. So yeah, mm. really not massive venues at all. Mm. And yet a household name, probably yep. because of um, the reality series, wasn't it? You know, we I, I have. I have friends who have no interest whatsoever in any of my musical tests. And yet I remember going around to the house on Friday night, 10 o'clock, they were watching the Osbournes on MTV. I imagine they could not um, point out a single solitary Black Sabbath song that isn't called Paranoid. 
or really probably couldn't do anything of his solo material. And how many millions but, of people were watching that show just to watch it and had and never listened to him ever? You know, exactly. Like, it's just some old washed up rock and roll singer. And I like reality shows, right? So we're going to watch this crazy bumbling family, right? That's, that's the reality of it all. However, my other favorite is Ozzy Osbourne's Blizzard of Oz. That's out of focus. That's in focus. There you go. Um, from start to finish, this is absolutely, uh, I believe the phrase is, fucking brilliant. <laughs> uh, just really, really, really great record. Uh, I mean, just look. I mean, look. Look at, look at that hairiness there. Look at that. Just... It's like it's like they've come off the come off the um, build the um, the building site and thought let's just let's just change Mel for the for the better show. It's just a fucking great record. Um, just the, the guitars are obviously off the scale, brilliant. They really are. There's there's bits that in you, it's one of those records you sit there and you, and you think, oh god, he's going to do that any second now. He's going to do it. He's going yes, there you go. And, and you're not know, listening to it earlier today. I was I was having that self same. Uh, self sick. I was really supposed to be doing some something else entirely. And I found myself so oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, no, no, Stephen. No. Um, just so many great, great, great songs. Uh, Mr. Crowley, that was what I was listening to. You know, a bit when you yeah, all right, excellent, very, just absolutely astounding, astoundingly good. Crazy train, I don't know. Goodbye to Romance it isn't even terrible. It's just a great record. It reminds me of a of a trip I made to Italy once, and um, I have no idea that why we persuaded the disc jockey to put on a cassette of Ozzy Osbourne's Blood of Oz, and. What was previously a very full dance floor, <laughs> they couldn't get back to Sabrina and Spania and Fr David and Patrick Hernandez any quicker. They really, they really couldn't. Uh, you know, after the end of like one and a bit song, you thought, why they fit? It doesn't fade out there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bye, bye, bye. <laughs> yeah, very much so. So, um, yeah. Uh, it, it, th these are two of those albums. One because my mum likes it, and one because it reminds me of a really great holiday that I had. Um, and I'm prepared to say that the second album might have been better. I, I really like others that I can't mention just yet. But um, yeah, those are my absolute favourites. And Bark at the Moon, in particular, a real favourite. Cool. Okay. So I come at this from a completely different angle. Because we do stress every time we do this, his favourites. And for me, this with Ozzy is pretty much one and the same. I personally think there's like an era of Ozzy where he's really pretty fantastic. And then there's not after that, really, realistically, kind of, well, pretty much definitely. So there were four possibilities for me for favourites, and therefore best. I'm not telling you that the best ended up as the favourites, but I'm not telling you that they didn't. I, I'm going to cheat and show you what didn't make the cut, though, because <clears throat> that didn't make the cut. Sorry, I know, I know. Okay, sorry. I'm assessing the future. Um, and, and this didn't make the cut. This is No More Tears. This is, in my humble opinion, the last great album that Ozzy did, in my humble opinion. So what did make it? And this was a real sacrifice, but this is the kind of thing that we're here to do for people, because all four of those are outstanding. But this is where I'm starting with. This is Blizzard of Oz. Should have been from the band Blizzard of Oz until Ozzy in one of those moments where he didn't really play fair with his band. He didn't do that very often. Decided to make it into a solo project. He was always about his band and the band members. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so this was from 1980 or 1981, depending on where you were. In, in the world. Um, and to me, Blizzard of Oz outdoes Diary of a Madman for one purpose. And that one purpose is I think the performances are better on Diary of a Madman. I think the songs are better on Blizzard of Oz. And it's a really tight kind of journey between the two for that reason. Do you know, yet D, this, this short kind of instrumental that Randy did for he liked his classical kind of thing. That's supposedly where he was headed 
before his untimely demise. I like it. Lots of people don't. But the rest of the album, oh, wow. It's just pretty much untouchable from start to finish. I mean, the writing team of Ozzy, bassist Bob Daisley, who is so often the secret weapon that, that Ozzy was using at this stage, and of course, Randy, is just phenomenal. Best he ever had, I would I would argue. Add in Lee Kerslake from you know, Heap fame. It's really awesome, I would have to say. Ozzy did try to rewrite history at certain points. Let's not go there. One of the stupidest things I've ever done in, in the world of metal, in my humble opinion, was to try and take people off and add people in and then expect the rest of the world to go, that's a good idea. We like that idea. There's no reason why we love this album up to now. Anyway, and how could you remove somebody who'd been in Mungo Jerry by this stage with Mr. Daisley, do you know? So, do you know? But yeah, the MVPs on this album are the songs. I Don't Know, Crazy Train, Suicide Solution, Mr. Crowley. These are classics, absolute classics in this catalogue and beyond. And I don't think that, like, No Bones movie, it's all up there. Steal Away the Night, Revelation Mother Earth. I even like the softy. I like Goodbye to Romance. I think it might well be the best softy he did. But he's actually done lots of those kind of ballads. And to be fair to Ozzy and the voice he's got, they tend to work. They don't always, but they do tend to work. The first two Ozzy albums, for me, I class them as kind of pure Ozzy. This is before... I think he kind of got lost in being a caricature of himself. He became something. He became a character. He became this... I always had to have some sort of... That picture that Simon showed, which is, I presume, there we go, on the back, lots of glare on this tonight, unfortunately. But this is as normal as it gets. Can you? I can't really think until the latter albums. I can't think of another kind of normal band shot that you kind of get that gets more prominence in these packages, because that's not what we were doing. We were all going, and 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 all this kind of, that seemed to be as much of what it became about at that point. You add in a, a cracking logo, right? Such a good band logo in the front of the album, and a really good cover. And to me, this is a classic, an absolute classic. Edges out Diary by an absolute whisker. And therefore, I will concede that the other album that I've chosen, which is Bark at the Moon is more frivolous. I think I think frivolous is a decent word when you compare it to the first two. But it's one of my favourites, so I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. Do you know? I am intrigued because Simon has a CD copy of that, which if he can still hold it up, then you'll notice that I've got it in red, Simon's CD, all the type is in blue. Ooh. And I've never really worked out why. The early ones, are, the very first ones were in blue for some reason. Okay, so all of the kind of stuff round the right was in blue, whereas on mine it's in red. I've always wanted a blue one. <laughs> Just because I don't have it. And I've never gone and got it. I've never stumbled across it. But anyway, <clears throat> I digress. What a surprise. So the band here, the band is fantastic. Bob Daisley has gone and come back again because we're all friends again now, not for long. Um, you've got Don Airy on keys, who I think is a great addition to this lineup and used really well on this album. You've got a complete unknown in J.K. Lee, who at this stage, I suppose you could class him as an ex-rough cut guitarist. I mean, he was in that band for a minute or two, realistically. He tried out for Dio and didn't get it, which Dio's loss was Ozzy's gain. But then again, Dio gained with Vivian Campbell, so it all worked out in the end. Let's be honest, it was good for everybody. And Tommy Aldridge. And I like Tommy Aldridge. I really like Tommy Aldridge. And I think on this album, Tommy's outstanding. He really is. He's some of the highlights here. Do you know? Yet again, there's controversy about who wrote what. According to, I think, this album, if you open it up, it basically tells you that Ozzy wrote just about all of it. No, he didn't. Ozzy never wrote nearly all of one album. If he did, we would only have got maybe one album. But that's really not the point. <laughs> um, and there's all these stories about Bob getting a one-off payment rather than credits and J.K. Lee being brought in and, you know, can you write some songs? Yes, I've written some songs. Well, don't expect a credit, otherwise we'll throw you at the band. Allegedly, rumours, who knows? I didn't say that, Sharon. Okay, I'd, it's... No wonder it became a revolving door. What a lot of nonsense. But anyway, 
what you end up with. I love this. The title track on this album is possibly the iconic Aussie moment. Everybody knows it within reason. If you're into hard rock, heavy metal, you know Bark at the Moon. You know when to howl. He really howls at the moon. He never really barks at the moon at all, does he? He doesn't bark once in the whole thing. Not, not that I really want him to bark, to be fair, do you know? But I am here for the OTT chanting, the bell chimes, and the organ intro of Forever. Not Centre of Eternity, by the way. On your version, Pete, it'll be called Centre of Eternity. On my version, it's called Forever. These albums were released minutes apart just about in the UK and the US. Why would you change a song name for a song that didn't do anything? No. Anyway, here you go. It's one, of the, it's one of those things you think, who had that conversation? Why? But anyway, maybe it's only me that's interested in things like that. I'd love to know why for no apparent reason. But anyway, the, the choppy guitars, the big thumping drums, the rock and roll rebel, it's just brilliant. And that cymbal work, the bell work from Tommy, oh, it's so good, so good. I air drum to that every single time. But there are two things that really push this above that I had to choose it for. One is the, the way the album embraces the keyboards. A lot of these albums don't have a keyboard player, but they do really. This one embraces the keyboards. It's part of the band. It's vital to what's going on. And I would also suggest, in my humble opinion, that this is Ozzy's best vocal performance. Song for song, note for note, if you believe Carmen Apache, who has supposedly lots to do with this and nothing to do with this, he sang it almost one word at a time, two words at a time, and it was really all pieced together and sewn up and not what he said. I don't care. He sounds brilliant on this. Absolutely brilliant. Better than he ever had. Sorry. And better than he ever would again. Sorry. Do you know? And I'll concede that in terms of songs, this is maybe the weakest out of the four that I've chosen as my best stroke favourites. As an album, it's got atmosphere, it's got presence, it's got energy. Jakey Lee is fantastic. What a waste that he's done so few albums across his career. Such a great guitar player that really should have had much more notice than he's had. So yes, this is my other favourite. So we've got Blizzard of Oz and Barkin. I think, though, Jake had to do the Aussie gig to discover that that really wasn't the type of music he ultimately wanted to do. You know? so yeah, I think, very good I mean, at it. I'm sorry, Simon. He's very good at it, though, wasn't he? Yeah, hey. well, for sure, for sure. But hey. I, it became pretty obvious when you listen to other stuff he did afterwards that that really wasn't, you know, I think the stuff he did on Badlands, that's the Jakey Lee. That's yeah, that's yeah. what he really wanted to do. But, you know, you don't, you, you get a gig with Ozzy, man. And, it's you know, and he he knocked it out of the park, regardless of the fact that he only lasted the two albums and a couple tours. It's like, you know, he he helped keep Ozzy on the map because, you know, Ozzy could have crumbled after the death of Randy right didn't happen because you know the ultimate sin and bark of the moon were really big sellers and the tours were big money grabs and you know so yeah he's he's the unsung hero of this catalog in my opinion but yeah he's a forgotten yeah. guitarist out, out of the, the main players i think yeah well you know he uh he has his own style but yet he really embraced playing Randy's parts from all the stuff they played. Like, cause I saw, I saw Jake live with Ozzy a couple of times and he was very, very um, much wanted to keep the spirit of all of Randy's guitar parts, the way they were on the albums, you know, um, which, you know, at the time, I think that's what everybody wanted, right? Because everybody was hurting over the fact that we lost Randy. And, you know, if he would have gone up there and just played his, you know, if he would have gone up there and done like a, did like a Tommy Bolin, not playing any of Blackmore solos the same and playing the riffs different like Tommy did when he joined Purple, I don't think people would have liked that too much. So I think, you know, I'm sure he was given direct orders from Ozzy and Sharon that you gotta, you gotta play all of Randy's stuff to a T. Um, to his credit, he did that. And then, of course, on the, you know, all original stuff on those two albums, you heard the real Jakey Lee, right? For the most part, you know, it was, sounded similar, but it was, it was Jakey Lee. It was different. So, all right. So my top two have been my top two forever. And, you know, Simon mentioned before about when you're picking favorites, there's usually a story behind it, or it's tied to a time in your life and that sort of thing. And those are the albums that remain special to you throughout your whole life. So, 
the first concert I ever saw was Ozzy Osbourne on the Blizzard of Oz tour with Randy Rhodes, with Motorhead opening up. Right? I mean, what a show to see to be a 15 year old kid for your first show. Uh, and I listened to those first two albums to death because I was an enormous Black Sabbath fan already, you know, and I embraced the Ozzy solo catalog as much as I embraced the Ronnie James Dio era of Black Sabbath. So to me, that was that was my world for a number of years. It was Ozzy solo and, and Black Sabbath. So no surprise that my two favorites are going to be from those early albums, right? But my number one, and it, to me, in recent years, the gulf between my number one and two has widened considerably. To me, there is no doubt that my favorite has been Diary of a Madman for many, many years. And I agree with you, Stephen, 100% that the playing is better on this because Randy improved so much in the span of less than a year. And his guitar tone, on he's, he's way better produced on this album. He's got this kind of chainsaw. Th I was just listening to Blizzard the other day. He's got this kind of like chainsaw thing going on that album. And it's not his fault. I think it's it's the production of it. Um, that to me is always kind of like a little harsh. But man, he sounds amazing on this album. And I would argue my more of my favorite songs are on this album. That's what it comes down to. I mean, Over the Mountain, love it. Flying High Again, love it. I heard that. I was listening to Sirius XM, Ozzy's Boneyard yesterday and Flying High again came on i'm like oh man i just love that guitar solo kills me every time you can't kill rock and roll brilliant uh believer brilliant little dolls fun you know tonight okay that's pretty good sato that's great the title track is the greatest ozzy solo song ever written ever performed ever recorded fight me on it and i will that is just an immense, immense song. Uh, I love it. I just, I think this album is amazing. And I think the saddest thing ever in rock and roll history is that Randy was not allowed to go and do the tour for this album fully and be able to play all these songs live because he was up fooling around in that little plane. And yeah, I, I remember that day like it was yesterday when he died. It was right before I went, was going to school because I was still in high school and we were listening to the local radio station. I was having breakfast with my parents before I went to go drive to school or catch the bus. I don't remember which. And we heard it on the local rock radio station that he had just passed away the night before in the plane accident. And I remember, I, I just, how do I go to school after that, right? You don't, I did, but you don't want to. So, yeah. Um, my number two is Blizzard of Oz. That best cover, because... This cover is kind of shit, but but this is a great cover. I mean, I remember the first time I saw this, I was like, oh, look at that. Man, Ozzy looks awesome. Look at that. Evil Prince of Darkness cover, right? Really, really great stuff. Really great. Yeah, and CD. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know it's so it's better. Yeah. That's so much better on the body. But even then, he's, he's already goofing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the diary cover is not good, but yeah, th this is awesome because here, you know, he's he looks great here, and then you see the band. Well, you don't really see Lear Cares like, but uh, but yeah, it's very very cool. But yeah, I, you know, there's iconic, possibly more iconic songs on the first album, of course. You know, I don't know, a Crazy Train and Mr. Crowley and Suicide Solution. You know, but uh, and it, it's his playing is just amazing on both of these albums, and it's really sad to think what he could have done. Right, um, I know he was based on interviews I've read with him and people surrounding him and his family and he was he was going in directions that i think would have either drastically changed the music of ozzy on the follow-up album if he had lived or he would have left the band and done his own thing and done some stuff that we probably never would have expected from him but we'll never know right so uh, but yeah these two are are timeless albums i like a lot of other albums in the catalog too none of them even I have a lot of love for Bark at the Moon as well. But to me, there are these two albums and then there's everything else. And unfortunately, and Stephen hinted at this, there's like those first six or so albums. And then there's everything else. And me personally, I love Ozzy. I, you know, he's like one of the gods of metal. There's some shit in this catalog. I mean, that's just, there is, you know, 
this he has not um delivered a lot of great albums since no more tears and i'd argue there's maybe very few really good albums since no more tears or even good i, I don't you know there's there's a couple pretty decent ones anyway that will i'll save that for next anyway back to sun um, as always, at this point, I say, which one are we doing now? Favorite, least, uh, least favorite. Yes. What Me Me meant to be two, son? Yeah, which which ones? Which 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 ones? Which which, which least favorites? Oh, we're doing least favorites. Oh, least excellent. Favorites. Yeah. Uh, Addition by subtraction. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Um, oh shit! Right. Okay. Um, Stephen, have you got the entire catalog there? I do. Yes. I'm. I I can't find my least favorite. Mainly because I pretend it doesn't exist. Okay. But it is fucking awful. And I think you know, because this is like shooting fish in a metaphorical barrel. I'm it's already under one up here, so let's see. When you go under undercover. Holy shit. Oh my god. I think I feel like I'm relatively justified in saying that this is arguably the worst record ever made by a major artist. Not only is it terrible, it's absolutely pointless. Really? Ozzy's got a Beatles fixation. I fucking never knew that. <laughs> <laughs> He's kept that hidden, hasn't he? Oh, my God. The, the version of Woman is that bad that you've got to stop right now. If you've never heard it, go and find it. Listen to it now. Especially when it goes... <clears throat> You know, I, I don't really like the, the, the John Lennon version, but you know, when you when you like metal it up like you're a pub rock band, no, just oh god, Rocky Mountain Way is terrible. Twenty first century skin, oh Jesus Christ on a bike. Oh, the, all the young dudes. Oh come on. no, I mean, it's just this is Mississippi you know, Queen. I mean, do you see a pattern here, people? Oh these are God. these are songs that everybody covers for crying out yeah. loud, right? I mean, mm -hmm. come on, Ozzy, Jesus. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I always these guys, and they always say, well, but we do covers albums and we pick songs that we grew up with that we love. I'm like, well, you all were listening to the same freaking radio station then because you all pick the same songs. It's like, God, will someone for once just do a covers album? I, I'm, I'm spilling my spot already here. Sorry, Simon, but yeah. <laughs> it infuriates me that these guys do all these bands and, and uh, artists do covers albums and they all cover the same songs over and over again. There's a million fucking songs out there in the history of rock and roll. And then you all listen to the same ones. It's like, ugh. Anyway, there's my rant for the day. I don't have to say it on my turn now. So. <laughs> good, good times. I, I, I was I was generally, I, I, um, I went for a little walk yesterday morning. I wasn't in the best mood. And I'm, um, uh, I, I was listening to Go Now, and I nearly took my earphones out and threw them away. <laughs> the, who, in the, who wanted that? Who said, you know, that's a really good idea, that one is. That's just, oh, dearie, dearie me. Just a terrible, terrible record. I'd like to think that we can, that we can all agree. But he defends it, doesn't he? He thinks it's fucking brilliant. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And it's not. No. Um... That said, moving on, I would like to say that I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to cheat. Obviously, obviously, I'm going to cheat because that's what I do. I am going to say that I, I find there's about thirty years of mehness in Ozzy's career, which will lead into what I'm. I'm about to say. You listen to me, think, yeah, that's all right, yeah, yeah, and then you think, wow, fifteen years have gone by since the last time I listened to that. A scream really I couldn't remember anything about it <laughs> just no just I, but anyhow I, I would I, I'm, I've got right because you know you buy these things don't you because you like artists I've got right and I know this isn't really like one of them I've got I've got to talk to the devil I've got it and I would say I haven't listened to this in the last 35 years I'm not going to listen to it <laughs> In the next 35, I just can't imagine that I will, but there is nothing that will make me give it away or sell it or anything, because I might. I just might think, do you know what? I really get Aussie era Sabbath now, I really get it. And I, want, and I just want to know what it's like with a guy out of Night Ranger on guitar. I really, you know, really want to know that. So um, just because I think the others are all much, I just can't pick, I can't pick any of the, uh, 
the 30 years and think <laughs> that one's worse than that one because there's just this level of <laughs> that's two of them I find you it's know. 100% right though it's like it, this. it's like this line of mediocrity it's like which one do you pick Toss exactly. one up in the air. Okay, we'll go with that one today, right? I mean, that's I have the same problem. Well, I have the exact same problem. Kind of, kind of guy that I am. I am going to come back with um, uh, my wild card that will uh, I feel vaguely surprise you. Cool. All right. Looking forward to that. I know. I've done. Okay. Yeah. I like Ozzy Osbourne. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna put that out there. Now. We all do. Okay. We all do. We all do. I love Aussie. Love him. Right. Anyway. Okay. I mean, I'm not gonna choose this as one of my two least favorite albums because, just like when we did Deep Purple, what I'm holding in my hand currently does not exist. Because <laughs> otherwise, I would have to acknowledge that I spent money on what is currently not in my hand. Okay. We have spoken about a lot of bad cover albums as we've done this show. This is the worst, and it's the worst by a long way, by a huge way. It's embarrassing, it's amateur, it's unprofessional. It's, you hear, you genuinely could go and hear any covers band and hear these songs done better than this. That's atrocious at the level we're talking about. That really is atrocious at the level that we're talking about. So what have I gone with? Well, so many options, so many options. I could have gone for patient number nine. One song with Mr. I Mr. Iomi, I know he's on two. I like one of them. Kind of saves it. It kind of lets it just bob and have a breath before going back down again. But this album is just here. This is Black Rain. Okay. I mean... The cover's so bad, it's not, doesn't even look like real rain. I, I, I have no idea what's going on. I don't think Ozzy has any idea what's going on. This album's just here. It just exists. There's no reason for it. It's not good. I mean, Kevin Churko, who produced it, seemed to write half of it, most of it, all of it. I don't really know. Zach has a couple of co-writing credits, well he's got quite a lot of co-writing credits, I think that means that he was someone said to him, Zach, go and play the solo mate. that's what I would guess happened there because it's just nonsense but this by this stage we're getting to the point where I have a real problem with Ozzy just doing Ozzy you know, he just does Ozzy, he's doing what people that watch the Osbournes expect there's a bit of that kind of cheerful chappy he's a prince of darkness but he's really a happy uncle kind of thing that's going on. And I really, really dislike that. This was a guy who was genuinely legendary, is genuinely legendary. And it comes down to stuff like Ordinary Man, where we just seem to line up guest stars for the sake of it that brings zero to anything. You've got big names in the band, you've got guys from Guns N' Roses and all this kind of stuff, and they end up all pretending to try and sound like Aussie's band. There was a point inviting these guys in and saying, do you know what, you're a talented guy, you've had a great career, come be my band, don't bring any of yourself though, we don't want any of that, we want you to sound like everything else that's happened over the past few decades. Ah, and it's just a confused mess, the title track's got harmonica in it, Aussie and harmonica, there's hardly a hook in sight, you get stuff like the almighty dollar, Aussie, the guy married to Sharon Osborne's going to lecture me about the mighty dollar. It, none of this makes sense. None of it's necessary. He kind of laughs in that kind of Aussie's crazy, isn't he mad kind of way. He goes on the cover. There's spooky sounds. There's, you know, keyboards that Ghost would look at and go on it. It's just horrible. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. I don't dislike everything in the latter part as much as those it's a close run thing times though <laughs> yeah there's a really disappointing amount of rubbish in the latter part of this catalogue unfortunately you know what the word I associate with a lot of the latter albums forgettable I, I sometimes struggle when I get into conversations with people and talking about Ozzy records of the last like 25 years and I'm like I'm hard pressed to even hum any one of them 
or remember any riff. They're just forgettable. You listen to them uh, half a dozen times and you're like, okay. And like Simon said, you put them away. 15 years go by, you realize, oh, I haven't listened to this Ozzy record. Let me pop it in. They're like, oh, now I know why. Right? It's sad. Because this is a guy that's been a part of some of the most important, you know, albums in heavy metal history, right? Uh, Steven, you might as well bring that back out. Oh, Ordinary Man was was one of my choices in 2020. It's dreadful. I mean, it's it's not good at all. His voice sounds way overproduced. I know he's got health issues and I know they beef up what he's doing in the studio. I get it. But it's just it just doesn't sound real to me anymore. Uh, the songs are uninspiring. It's not really heavy. Yeah, he looks ridiculous. You know, Post Malone, oh my God. You know, I love Elton John, but he doesn't belong on an Aussie record, you know? And go, I'm telling everybody who's watching, go to Wikipedia, wherever you want to go, and look this album up and look at the list of guest artists and musicians on this album. You will be blindsided. What's it, like 75 people took part in this album, Stephen? It's a, it, I couldn't it's believe it. Crazy. I think it is 50 plus. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Crazy. Ridiculous. <clears throat> but you know what? You can have guest stars on an album as long as the album's good, the songs are memorable. This this isn't either. So, no good. Uh, my other one, yeah, it's Undercover. I mean, you know, like I said before, 13 cover songs, half of which we've heard a million times by a million other artists. It's boring. Uh, and you know what's really disappointing about Undercover? I would have really liked the first time collaboration between Ozzy and Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains to have been more impactful. And this just blows. It's no good. It's just, I mean, I, I've always, I've been down on covers albums for quite a while now, but at least give me something. You know, I, I can give some credit to a band or an artist who does a covers album and they pick like weird stuff or obscure stuff or they do songs you kind of know but they totally reinvent them right you don't get any of that here no good so yeah those are my two bottom of the barrel there could have been others i had a hard time because man i could have chosen any number of the ones from like the 2000s even some of the late 90s ones just a lot a lot of a lot of, lot of meh. before we go into wild card what kind of strikes me as you look through the latter half of the catalog yeah, it's easy to be throw away and put your heart full about some of these things because they're really there's some poor albums here. But band members come and go at such a rate. Yeah. And a lot of them return again. I mean, Randy Castile was in the band, out the band, in the band, out the band. Zach Wilde plays on some songs here, he plays on whole albums there, he misses out Scream entirely. How invested could any of these guys really have been? Ozzy's he's got a new album coming out. Do you want to turn up? I've got three days free. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I maybe do them all a disrespect. It maybe wasn't like that. And I know that Zach has always been very kind in his words about Ozzy, mainly during the years. But it just feels like it was just another gig for people. There are lots of solo artists out there whose bands come and go. And there seems to be just a spark that lights these albums up. It just doesn't yeah. happen. No. I mean, I remember when Gus G got the gig a number of years ago. And I was really excited for him because Gus is a great guitar player. He's done some great stuff with Firewind and other bands that he's been in. And I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Ozzy's going to have this great new band, right? Spearheaded by Gus G. Gus G will finally get the recognition he deserves. And then that album came out and I'm like, you, you if you didn't know any better, you couldn't even tell that it was him. And it just didn't sound any different from the albums that came before it. And I'm like, God, they didn't do anything special with this new lineup, with this new great guitar player. It's like, uh, you know, at least like, you know, when Randy and when uh, Jake and when even when Zach first joined the band, right? Those those albums, those initial albums were special. They they were allowed to add their imprint into the music and the songs and the albums. And then, you know, he brought Gus in and man, it was just like the same old, same old again. I'm like, oh man. And that didn't last, right? Obviously. So it's just like, so I, I yeah, I agree with you 100%. There's no band anymore. It's just like whoever he can get to come in and yeah, that gets tiring after a while. And the results don't, don't show anything, you know? All right. Simon's got some good, something really good for us, I think. Well, you won't think so, but, you know, who cares, really? Um, which order shall I do this in? Um, I nearly went with Ultimate Sin because um, he then I thought, he made, he made a melodic, melodic rock album? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, we'll save that for another day. <laughs> put that to one side. Yes, yes, we will. It can go on what many people are describing as the very very long list 
Yes. So, yeah, I, I am, however, going to go with no rest for the wicked. Reminds me of when I was when I was at university. I had it on cassette, right? And all my cassettes are upstairs in the loft, waiting to come out because I've recently acquired a cassette player. Alrighty, yeah. Um, and I don't remember, because this is the uh, CD reissue, I don't remember, and maybe he was, um, Geezer Butler being all over the... Uh, it's the sure shit not on the fucking album, is it? Am I right? I Bob Daisley guitar. This, this is the last one that Bob Daisley's on, is that not right? Yeah, but all the yep. pictures... Are, are Excuse Geezer. me. Yeah. He thinks unless he went there for a tour. Was that the tour he was on? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't remember. Yeah, anyhow, that's not the part. There are some great songs on this. Yeah. Miracle Man. Oh yeah, Jimmy Swaggart really took took one up the arse there, didn't he? De De Devil's <laughs> daughter. Yeah. Crazy babies. Yeah. Great song. Breaking all, breaking all the rules. Break all the rules. Yeah. So we've only got three band members. The Trident of Doom. And... Yeah, look at this. We've got three band members picked up. So we've got Zach Randy and oh. we've got Ozzy. And Bob Daisley writes, or co-writes pretty much all of this. Really? There's, there's no basis. There's, there's definitely, definitely more. Lots of pictures of uh, your Uncle Geezer on that. Oh, yeah. Mm. And, uh, so, yeah, he's, he's even, on, he's even on, the, uh, on the actual CD itself, which is in the player over there. But um, I, 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 I went up and down the... Um, up and down the Ronda, Ronda Valley for three years at, at university and listened to the listen to it absolutely incessantly. And yes, yeah, Stephen. Bob Daisley bass. There you go. Yeah, that's what he says, but not pictured as many as uh, many times Ooh. as your uncle Geezer. Anyhow, okay, right. This is where the UK connection, UK connection completely diverges because we all hear things differently, don't we? Yep. Just thought I'd set that one off down down in the comments below because um, Ozzy Osbourne not long ago for me made what I like to call his Randy Orton album. Do you like that wrestling 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 thing? Yeah, straight out of nowhere came the Viper, I, the Viper himself. Viper, yes indeed. I the Legend oh, Killer. Yes, yes, and I love Ordinary Man. I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, I love about seven, seven tenths of it, something like that. I, re I really love Sidebomb. I absolutely love it. I, I am I am there from the minute he goes, all right, now. Yes, <laughs> yes, I am. I am in there. I love the title track with uh, with um, Elton John. Yes, Stephen. Did, did I do oh, that? No, no, we're all good. We're all good. Did Thanks. I uh -huh. Did I? Did I? I re under the graveyard, yeah, tune and scary little green man is the most stupidly brilliant song in the history of mankind. I really like it. Do you know what I like about it? I like about the fact that um, he's not wedded to so, to to a guitar hero. He's wedded to a producer this time round. Although he's also wedded to somebody with a plastic face, but that's not important right now. Um, I, I just it, it, I don't know why it really connected with me in a, in a way that Patient Number Nine didn't. And in, in a way that um, here I was all excited that he was picking no rest for the wicked. Now I'm like, uh, I'm deflated. <laughs> yeah, I, I give a thumbs up and everything. I, I've kind of endorsed this choice now. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I really enjoy it because it's you know when we're when we're doing this and I've listened to them all. I thought, which ones am I going back to? And this is one of the ones that I went back to. And, it, and it's, you know, when, when, when you're getting up in your morning, you go, scary little green man, because you've got to do everything in that kind of, like, style, haven't you? you know, when, you when you're walking around the house at 7 o'clock in the morning, scary little green man. Oh, yeah, you're beautiful. You know, and nobody's there with you. No? Okay. Um, and, no, just me. Fair enough. Although that, although that it's a raid with Post Malone. Shite. Um, I, don't, I, don't I don't really. <laughs> it's that time again where... I don't know who Post Malone is. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I, I, I've, I haven't actually thought to myself, do you know what? I'm going to investigate more of the Malonesters work. Don't do it. Trust me. <laughs> okay, I, I, I won't. But I believe they had some form of big hit, didn't they? Um, and uh, yeah. Sad times indeed. I, 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 I genuinely enjoy it. I stand, I stand by my enjoyment of it because unlike the 30 years in between, I actually remember some of the songs. That's what it's all about, right? What, three, four years later? Yeah. Yeah. I, st 
I sit by my choice. Okay. Well, hey, we do all hear things differently. So I applaud you for that. My abiding memory of, of listening to this album for the first time was on a hot summer's day. On a hot summer night, would you yeah. offer your throat with a <laughs> Sorry. My, my kids were outside and one of my daughters came in the house and went, Dad, why are you listening to Post Malone? <laughs> it's like, who he? <laughs> what that? <laughs> I was like, that's the guy singing. I was like, that's me, child of mine. I wish I knew. Yeah, I was like, the guy singing is Ozzy Osbourne. There's just some other bloke there. <laughs> like, oh no, so that's who the other guy is. <laughs> ah, yes. Ah. <clears throat> so, yes, right. Okay. So, following that. <laughs> Somehow, I, I I find personally, I find the studio catalog of this really quite simple to 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 work out. First six albums, yay! After that, no, I don't mind Osmosis. Okay, I don't mind Osmosis, and there are a few good songs, and I really genuinely mean that, folks. A few good songs is what there are. So I had to kind of drill down. With it being a solo catalog, there's not really offshoots and. Strange things that you can pull in and go, well, actually, there's not really a wild card, so I'll hold up something that's vaguely loosely associated, which I quite like to do. So I had to look at live things. There's lots of live things. Yeah. Lots of live things. I do like this. This is very early. This is the Mr. Crowley EP. Yes, we're already kind of getting a bit silly and all this. Kind of, but there's a great shot. Look at Ozzy here. Okay, But there's only three songs on it. They are Mr. Crowley, You Said It All, and Suicide Solution. Okay, it's nice. It's nice. I like that, but it's not that. This is a weird one, and I, I, I've got a funny feeling it may come up later. Okay, and then this is Talk. Talk. Spelled T-A-L-K. Talk of the Devil. That's what this album is called. We're not yeah. speaking here. Hey, hey. Otherwise known as the Strawberry Jam album, but that's not the point. This is great, but it's a Black Sabbath album. Okay, so it doesn't count, and it's as simple as that. Okay. I didn't get it. I, when I first bought that album, I, I genuinely listened to it and thought, not known history at this point. I was young. I put it on and went, why is he playing all those other people's songs? <laughs> it's a whole album. History tells me different, and I get that. Going into this, I thought this would be dead simple, because I thought it was an absolute stick-on to be this. Okay, tribute, Ozzy Morandi. I was going to ask when you had the Diary of a Madman special edition, which I don't have, how the live album is. How does it? It's great. Yeah, to this is is it because th this is I, I love this for sentimental reasons. It's not necessarily the best live album ever, but at the point it was all we really had was Ozzy and Randy. So I bought this, loved it. Played yeah, it I would say you need to have this. The live stuff is yeah, great. Okay. I kind of thought that, but, but there you go. But it, it isn't actually what I chose, and the reason it's not what I chose, I I really haven't been very true to myself here at all, because. I like a live album that lies to you. Every live album, all the classics, all the ones that we love, rave about, and have carried through our entire lives have all been touched up, overdubbed, worked on in the studio and all these things. I like to at least pretend that that's not what's happened. But Live and Loud is very honest about the fact that this is separate recordings pieced together from different dates. You've even got the Black Sabbath song with the classic Black Sabbath lineup on here, which did happen once or twice or something like that on this tour. Because th this, folks, this is 30-something years ago. This is Ozzy saying goodbye at this point. I think it, this is his farewell tour. This was no more tours. Ozzy's done, guys. You know, I saw this tour. And I put Live and Loud on. And for an album that is not even... I mean, that does play like a consecutive gig. The crowd, which is clearly wrapped up in the mix massively does segue into one another. You do feel like you listen to one show, but it doesn't lie to you. It tells you what every performance was and all that kind of stuff. The band was stuck wild with, with Ozzy, obviously. Mike Inez on bass, Randy Castillo, Yo-Yo Wing on drums back again, and a guy, Kevin Jones, on keyboards that I know very little about, realistically. I saw this tour. I saw Ozzy on this tour. He played the Emirates Playhouse on this tour, and there is a montage at the start where because he wasn't ever coming back again, and we got a video on the night, and it took you through his career, from Black Sabbath to all the big hits, all the big songs, all the key moments, 
and they play it on this and you think, oh, that's not going to work because we saw these clips and all this kind of stuff. But it's been put together so cleverly that all the iconic moments from Paranoid and then you get all aboard and then you get the, the start of Bark at the Moon. They don't just play it, it goes din din and there's silence. din din ha, ha, ha. And I remember being there and it's happening now. The hairs on the back of my neck rose and the audience went wild. And it's one of those moments where you think, why can't every band do this? Capture that spirit, have everyone up for it before they've even set foot on stage. And they come in and they went straight into Paranoid. And the place just went wild. And I listened to this album, which is pieced together from all these performances, and it's beautifully packaged. It won awards for this fantastic metal speaker looking thing. I'm immediately taken back there. I was a massive Aussie fan at this stage. At this point, he hadn't put a foot wrong. All his albums were brilliant. It didn't really matter what he played. And, and it, there's a sprinkling of Sabbath in this set, and that's perfect for me. I want him to acknowledge that past, because without it, he'd be nothing. These songs are great, they're iconic. If I go to the Aussie, I want a night of Aussie. And that's what we got. And it's such a good album. And I really genuinely surprised myself. It's a long time since I listened to this, and there's lots of live choices in the Aussie catalogue. I put this on, I, I just couldn't concentrate on anything else that I was doing because I was suddenly 30 years younger than I am now, if only. And just right back in a moment, I know who I was at the gig with, I know where we stood in the venue, everything. And I was there. And this, which doesn't have any of those performances on it, because that it's all in America, it just took me right back there. And I love it. I have to say, much more than I anticipated. So my, my wild card is live and loud. That's a great choice. I haven't listened to that in probably like 20 years. I, I may just go grab it from the bottom <laughs> of my shelf over there where all the Aussie stuff over, over just near where Nuka is right there and listen to that while I'm cooking dinner after the show. So, and so yeah, it's a good I mean, I, I, Yeah, I've spoken about Randy Rhodes. I've spoken about Jake Healy. Zach, Zach Wild on this. You're great on oh, it. Yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah. good. He's so good. So yeah. good. I'm a fan. I, I really like Zach as a guitar player. I really do. I like Black Label Society. I, you know, it, a lot of people complain that like, kind of like, you know, once you've heard a Zach Wilde album or two, you've kind of got his whole repertoire there. And, you know, maybe there's some truth in that, but I just think he's a tremendous player and uh, I love his tone. He's just, and, and I, I appreciate the fact that he's an enormous Sabbath fan. I mean, he's just, I mean, you talk to him, he's he lived and breathed Black Sabbath when he was growing up. So I can appreciate that. All right, so the wild card was really difficult for me uh, because I tend to like when I do my wild cards, I I tend to want to pick an album that kind of sits in the middle of all the other ones. It's not one of my favorites. It's not ones I really dislike. It's something that I kind of I like somewhere in the middle, or I'll pick a live album like you did, or you know something like that. And uh, you know the problem is with this catalog is like there's. There's a, a good handful of albums that I just don't really care for all that much. And then there's the stuff I do like, right? So I'm like, so what what will sit like right in the middle? What would be my wild card? What what is something that I at least have an appreciation for? And I decided to go with again, I, I decided this literally an hour before we were gonna do the show because I couldn't figure out what I was gonna pick. I said, you know what? I'm gonna go with an album that at first I wanted to hate. And the more I listened to it, the more I was kind of like, you know what? This isn't bad. There's things I still dislike about it, but there's enough that I like about it that I can call it my wild card. And part of me wishes that it would be his last album. I'm going to go with Patient Number 9 as my wild card. I find that 60% of this I actually enjoy. The rest of it I could care less about. But, you know... The one he does it to you hit it the nail on the head, Stephen. He does the two tracks with Iomi, or maybe it was Simon that said it. He does the two tracks with Iomi. One of them is really, really good. The other one's okay. Uh, I think Eric Clapton plays his best rock guitar solo on this album that he's done in I can't tell you how long. Jeff Beck sounds great on here. Zach sounds great on here. There are a there's some cheesy stuff on here that I have a hard time with where it's like way overproduced and they're just going for this whole like like mr darkness is a little ridiculous um one of these days oh that's that's one with clapton it's not that one i'm trying to think of what uh parasite patient number nine is pretty good 
I think Jeff Beck is really good on that. Uh, that dark side blues thing has got to go. I don't know. This whole, this whole fascination with harmonica is just like, uh, God only knows I can't, can't deal with it all. Um, evil shuffle is pretty good. Nothing feels right. I don't like thousand shades. I'm not great. I'm not fancy about, but yeah, no escape from now is amazing. And I really like patient number nine, the title track immortals is okay. Parasites good. I don't know. There's enough to like on this album, but you know, my issues with this album and the one before it, it's so overproduced and, you know, Andrew Watt is probably a really talented guy, but I don't want to hear constant strings and synthesizers and all this fluff on an Ozzy record. I just want Ozzy, a guitar player, a bass player, a drummer, and maybe a smattering of keyboards, all this other bullshit that's sprinkled all over this album and the album before it do away with it. And you actually have some really good songs here. And that's my issue with this album. It's so overproduced. There's actually some catchy stuff on here and some good songs, but as it is, I do like it. I'm warming up to it a lot more. So I don't know. This is kind of a cheat, I guess, because I still have issues with this album, but I like enough of it. It's my wild card for today. <laughs> but I wish I really, honestly, I really wish that would be his last album. I, I just, I love Ozzy to death, but it's don't do anymore. Because you know what the problem is? A lot of people really like this album. This album, you know, I mean, there's obviously the people that are never going to like anything he puts out again, but a lot of people jump back on board the Ozzy train, jump back on board the crazy train with this album. And and I, I sometimes wonder how many people who say they really enjoy this album and are all of a sudden back into, oh, Ozzy, yes, he's back and all that kind of stuff. How many of them really have sat through a lot of these other albums that have come out over the last 20 years, right? So I'm like, why don't you leave it while the iron is somewhat hot? Let this be your, your final album and go retire and enjoy the rest of your life. Because, I mean, he's not well and he's got all these issues. And I, I mean, I know it's kind of easy for him to get into the studio and do these things. You know, they just bring him in and, you know, he's probably got people helping him write the songs and they bring in a shitload of musicians and, well, let's make an Aussie record. But it's like the fact that this was somewhat successful and people actually say they like this. I, I hope like we don't see like another one in eight months and it's complete shit like some of the other ones have been. And it just tarnishes it. You know, go out in a high note. Just go. But I don't think Ozzy cares to do that. I think Ozzy is going to be recording and performing till he's gone. And I don't think he wants any other way. He doesn't want it to be. It. That's that's what he's going to do. And that's his right, right? That's of course it is. Of course it is. I mean, I genuinely, I could stop here. I have them all. I have stuck with it. I have hoped to have better albums than we've had. I, I almost picked that. I almost picked that out. That was, was, was looking at the back of this. There are four songs that I can kind of give you a chorus from. I mean, in Perry Mason, it, it's ridiculous, but it's it's pretty good. I so, like Perry Mason, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the lyric just makes me... Oh, it is, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. It's just bonkers, but I still sing it, and I just want you. It's a really good one, too. I remember putting this album on and going, we're off. Yeah. It's kind of... But after this, I have it all. I remember very little of it. I've tried hard for some of it. It's hard. I, I, I think that there is a um, a level of just i don't know i don't know like i mean i've used the term forgetful forget or forgettable before you know like you think of like no more tears right that's filled with great songs i almost picked that as my wild card too but then i'm like how can i pick that because that's probably like my you know third or fourth or fifth favorite ozzy record so that i didn't feel right doing that but that to me that's the last album where i truly can look at the track list and say really good really good really good and actually know the songs in my head going down them and then some of these other ones i pick i'm like i don't know how that fucking song goes i don't know how that song goes i i, I couldn't couldn't tell you couldn't couldn't hum a riff couldn't do nothing they're just they're just there's nothing memorable about them unfortunately i, I really feel that the last four for me i, I use a phrase it's aussie bingo because you know it's you're going to get the spooky laugh you're going to get the slow song because Ozzy always has a slow song on the album. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, going yeah. To come. Yeah. Whichever guitarist happens to walk past the studio that week will go at some stage. The, the, it really is Ozzy Bingo. It's it's generally like the, there's a production chart that goes up that goes here. The 
aspects that make an Ozzy Osbourne album, how many can we tick off the board? Write good songs. It doesn't matter if it's got all those kind of hallmarks and all these various things. And I don't need him to be the Prince of Darkness anymore. We all know that he put heads off doves and bats and pissed on things and all this kind of stuff. I get all of that. Just write some good songs and sing them well. Yeah. And, you know, another thing, too, that I miss. So when Ozzy was in, and then this is not a vocal thing, uh, you know, when Ozzy was with Black Sabbath, you remember the, the riffs just as much as you remember the songs. On the first two Ozzy albums, you remember a lot of riffs and you remember some solos, right? They're very memorable. Even Bark at the Moon and Ultimate Sin, even up to No More Tears, you remember a lot of those cool riffs and solos. I find like all the other albums that came afterwards, and granted, you get some, you know, you got a great, I, I said it before, you got a great Eric Clapton solo on one song, you get a couple memorable Jeff Beck solos, you get a couple riffs from Iomi, but like for the most part, it's like it's like we're searching for something else on these Ozzy records to grab onto because what we know and love about anything Ozzy was associated with for many, many years was a lot more than just his vocals, right? You, you had, you know, all that kick-ass rhythm, that great riff, that great solo. You're not getting any of that anymore. So yeah. when you don't have a great song or any great songs and you can't even look forward to a great guitar riff or a great guitar solo, what do you have? You don't have anything, right? Yeah. Th those first six albums have all, and there's lots of interchanging bassists come and go and come back again and go again and come back again. But there, there is a band feel. The rhythm sections are really tight. They're really strong. The guitarist has a real personality. Whether they're all kind of playing that kind of Randy Rhodes role, which they kind of are, Jakey Lee and Zach definitely do. I get all that. After then, to me, it really does become a lot of talented individuals. I'm not going to go at anyone that's played with Ozzy before anyone in the comments goes, ah, but he was great. They are great. But it's not a band anymore. They're studio projects that happen to have the same guy singing on them. Yeah. And like most studio projects, not all, they just lack something. They don't have that spark. They don't have that kind of, uh, you know what, but we wrote those songs, we toured together, we'll come back together, go to the studio, we're about to take these out on the road again. Because nobody knew if they were going to be in a band in six months' time because I'd imagine they were put on a retainer for a wee while. Let's do this, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah. And you, f I, th I feel that through these albums. It really is genuinely the projects. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to hear him doing having a song with, uh, you know, Slash anymore. It's just like, whatever, you know? It's like, it just doesn't excite me. You know, would I buy a Ozzy and Tony Iommi joint album if they decide to do that? I would. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Because quite frankly, that's the most successful song on this album. Is this the yeah. first song they do together, No Escape from Now? That's terrific. That to me sounds like Black Sabbath. And I will say, Patient Number Nine, the title track, that's a damn good song. A little overproduced, but that's yeah, that's kind of what I want. That that reminds me of like late 80s Ozzy a little bit, like Ultimate Sin era, you know. Bark at the moon, but the rest, you know, there's there's other stuff on there that's good, but um, yeah, and there's just too many players. It's like you just you know, and you you want to like, oh, who's that playing on that song? Who's that playing that guitar solo? Mike McCready, is that the Pearl Jam guy? Oh, what's he doing on here, right? And then that's and I wind up like trying to rationalize in my head why are all these people on this album, right? What is this like Santana Supernatural all over again? Let's just get every you know buddy we possibly can onto this album, and uh, I, I, after a while, that that wears a little thin with me. I, I want to hear Ozzy in a band again. I think that's the moral of the story here. I think we all do, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you one thing, I don't want to hear anymore: Post Malone on an Ozzy record. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, cover versions? No, thank you. No. Yeah. You two had good therapy for the last 15 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, Uncle Simon. I, 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 um, my, my, fee, my fee you can send directly to me. I've listened. I understand. Yes. No. Just go out. Enjoy your lives. See that, Stephen? Who knew we were going to do a uh, favorite, least favorite Ozzy Osbourne and wound up being just getting everything off our chest that we're unha unhappy with Ozzy about for the last 20 minutes. 
feel just lighter now. And Simon just sat there and listened and like these guys. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. So with this sharp. <laughs> oh. All right, Stephen, you wanna give everybody a little preview of what to expect in the next episode? And yes, we are taking very much a left turn from Ozzy Osbourne. We are ranking the songs on a classic album in two weeks' time. And we shall be doing some sports because we are ranking sports by Huey Lewis and the news. So that's what we're going to be doing. Some great songs on that. So all the metal fans are like, what the fuck are they doing that for? <laughs> we, we cover a gamut of We're all things. over the place, right? We are, right? Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Go listen to that album. It's really good. Yeah. Really good. And I think that like will be it, an easier assignment than what we did last time with the uh, Queen uh, Night of yeah. the I would say it was so. a lot of fun, though. It was a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah, I gotta say, I haven't listened to the uh, well prior to now. Uh, I haven't listened to that Huey Lewis album in quite some time, but that was that was really big here. Really big. It was a big album in general. Yes, he arrived or they arrived. They were a band at that point. Yeah. Um, and that kind of changed it as things went forward, probably from about this point onwards. But yeah. Um. I really like that album, and I, I do genuinely mean that. If there are people who kind of just know some of these hits, which I like, and I go and go listen, really good, some really really good stuff on that album. Yes, it's great. I, I haven't listened to it until never, until you suggested it. So. Oh, you never heard that before? Wow. Okay, Wait, was that album big by you guys at all? Not really. No. He, he was. He, he, they had lots of top forty hits, singles, and things from this album onwards. Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't as kind of as ubiquitous as it was in the US because they, they were massive for a period of time. I don't think they were massive ever here, but yeah, as someone that didn't really keep an eye on the charts, I knew who Hugh Lewis and the news were, not because I was into the scene, but because you heard the music. But Simon would appear to be looking up facts to tell me I'm wrong. They, they had a, a, smatter, a smattering of um, UK hits, particularly um, Power of Love and Do You Believe in Love, which was a double-A side, wasn't it? Yeah, they, tr they trouble the te top ten occasionally, and no, no, no. I mean, well, that's, that's, that's really con cool. context for next week. I, I was going to say I was going to ask you a question and thought, hold on, that's for two weeks. Yeah, well, we're going to do. We're we're jumping the gun here. So yeah, so so for those of you who are interested in uh, taking part in this assignment, so there is your assignment: the Huey Lewis and the News Sport. Rank the songs as you like them. And we're going to do the exact same thing two weeks from today. So we're going to go from, jump from Ozzy Osbourne to Huey Lewis in the news. So whatever you call Huey Lewis in the news, pop, pop rock, something like that. 80s rock. I don't know. Huge band here in the in the States in the 80s. But uh, yeah, so we're, that's what we're doing next time around. So uh, stay tuned for that. And visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please give us your favorite, least favorite and wild card records from Ozzy Osbourne down in the comments below. And we'll see you here in two weeks' time on the UK Connection for Simon Bray and Stephen Reed. I am Pete Pardo. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, everybody, and Sunday. Stay tuned for Ranking the Albums tomorrow. Till then, oh, yeah, we're all, and I'm empty too. I, I may have to go get another one. It's a little earlier by me than it is by you guys. Uh, Simon, are you done? 6.6 6 units. No, of course I'm not done. I've got to drive <laughs> in the morning. Sorry, it's Saturday. I've got to do things on Sunday morning. There you go. Okay. All right. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> everybody. See you real soon.